Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can quickly add your own custom business logic to your Scaffold API using Scaffold's new logic feature. We're going to implement a single, simple microservice that does one thing that's critical to every business. What is that thing? Every time a new user is created in our application, we're going to add them to a mailing list on MailChimp so that we can effectively market to them. Let's get started. So first we're going to log in. Once we've logged in, I'm going to go ahead and choose an app. I'm going to choose my Moonshot app. So this is a pretty simple app. Uh, I haven't really changed much. I did add one group type. But then we're going to go to the Logic tab. And then the, this is a new portal that lets you control your business logic and add business logic microservices, often using something like AWS Lambda or Azure Functions or even Google Cloud Functions or a cool new uh, service that comes out of the guys that make Auth0 called webtask.io. So basically what you do is you can you can tie a logic function to any mutation in your API. So we're going to use the create user mutation. When I add the create user mutation you see that by default I get this little selection set. For our purposes we only really need the email of our user and we're going to use the username field to to hold it. So when a user logs in they're going to log in with their email and then in scaffold that goes through the username field and then we don't need any of this other information we also so we're going to delete it and the next thing is that we need a URL so we actually don't have one of these yet so for now I'm just going to put in a placeholder and you can give a description just so you understand what this thing's doing so it's going to be add user to MailChimp okay then click create and now you'll see that that's there so now we go we need a microservice so we're going to use webtask.io. It's a super easy way to get these kind of JavaScript microservices running really quickly. So if you go ahead and log in, then it'll take you to this quick little tutorial. So if you're following along, you're going to go ahead and need to run this to install the CLI tool. I've done it to so run npm install wtcli-g. And then you're also going to need to initialize your webtask account. So then if you, when you run this WT init and then your email, they'll send you an email with a code and then you need to enter that code. And then after that, you're ready to start making web tasks. So they give you a super simple one here, basically just prints hello uh, via an HTTP request. But we're gonna do something a little bit more complicated, but still pretty simple. So I actually already have one. So let's open that up in a text editor. And then you can see it here. So it's pretty simple. One of the cool things about webtask.io is that when you require things from a JS file, it actually just works. You don't have to worry about installing it yourself. So here we have a couple keys. These are going to change. These are from a phony account. So we'll come back and make and get these. But then what you can see is we basically expose a sing, one sing, simple function. It goes through and says, okay, context.data, this context thing passed in is what's going to hold the payload from our request. Callback is what we can use to tell them that we're finished operating in the in the function and then here I'm basically saying okay get the user payload that's going to come from scaffold make sure it has the username which is going to be holding our email and then if we have everything then go ahead and make a post request to MailChimp so we're going to make a post request to slash lists slash our MailChimp list ID slash members with an email address and the status of subscribed and then if that all works we're going to if it doesn't work, we're gonna we're gonna error out. If it does work, we're gonna return null as the first argument, which means that it works. There's the first argument is an error, and then we're gonna return the result from Mailchimp. Great. Okay. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and create our microservice. So to do that, go back to your terminal and do wt create, and then we're gonna call ours subscribe to Mailchimp. Okay. And then you just do wt create, and then pass in the file. And then once that's finished, you actually get this URL. So take that URL and then let's go back to scaffold and then double click this item to edit it. And then right here, you can go ahead and put it back. So then now we're telling it after the create user operation, use this selection set and apply it to the payload from that mutation and then post that because it's a subset to post to this URL. Great. So we're gonna click set, save. Okay, so the next thing we do, we, what, what we need is, if you realize, we actually don't have these values yet. So our web our webhook isn't going to work. Our microservice isn't going to work. So we're going to go do that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and create an account. 
only takes a couple minutes. I'm going to use a fake email. Here we go. Let's get a new one. There we go. Okay. Call it Zeza tutorial. Okay, it's going to go through. It's going to ask me a couple simple questions. I'll get an email. I'll activate it. There we go. Oh. Okay, so we have enter some basic information. Cool. And then here. And then we'll keep going. Okay, so now it's ready. So now that our account's ready, we can go ahead and get that information. So for our, our API token, we're going to go to account, and then extras, and then API keys, and then we're going to go down here, and we're going to click create. We're then going to grab this API key, and we're going to put it right in here. Next, we need a list. So let's go ahead and create a list. We're going to call it Moonshot Users. And then we'll do hello. So ideally, it will be something like, a, like an email marketing campaign, something that every business really needs. So we'll do you know, a friend in here. Cool, okay, so we set up a simple list. Click save, and MailChimp's a great tool for managing these campaigns, and it allows you to do A-B testing and all kinds of cool things. So it's really a, uh, a tool that's used by a lot of real companies, and I highly recommend it. We use it at Scaffold as well. So we got the list ID. So if you didn't notice, I went, I after I did it, I clicked on, let me show you real quick, I clicked on uh, settings. You can do it from here as well, settings, and then when you do it from here, it's actually at the bottom of the page. There it is. So I took that, and the last thing we need is our DC. The DC is the data center. So you can grab that from your URL on any page. So you see that US 14 up there. Yours might be different, but that's what they are. So then cool. All right, so now we have this, it's set up, and now we need to update our function with our new code. So to update the function, you actually use WT update, and then you'll pass in subscribe to, so this is actually the name of your function. So if you do WT LS, it'll list all your functions. So here's ours. So we'll do WT update and then the name of the function and then we pass in the file this time. Great, okay, so it's the same URL as we saw before. So this is ready to go. So now all we need to do is test our webhook. So there's two things you can do. If you want, if you know that things are coming before, you can actually do WT logs and then it'll attach to a stream of logs. So then, but you can also see all logs in your scaffold portal. So we'll just go ahead and test it. So let's go ahead and create a user. And create. Cool. Okay, so that works. Then let's see, did this work? Okay, it looks like it got a 200. It ran just over five seconds ago and took about a second. And then we can actually go verify it over here. And we can see the same thing. The web task request ended with a 200, 812 milliseconds. There's a little bit of latency. But then we should be able to go back to our list, click on our lists, and then click on Moonshot Users. And do a refresh. And there it is. There's our user. Awesome. Okay, well that shows you how you can very rapidly add microservices and business logic to your Scaffold API. I hope that helped, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.